this whole business of being your own personal self and you can do it myself and I'll live in a cave or something like that. No, that's not the way human beings have ever really been. They may have lived in caves, but they lived in caves together. <laughs> or they lived in tribes, or they lived in, in clans or groups or neighborhoods. We live in neighborhoods now, okay? And we live in families. And we need one another. We are not meant to be totally independent. We are, we are supposed to be interdependent, which means that we depend on one another for things. You know, I don't know how you can go into a marriage and not understand that. That would be really, really tough if you didn't know that you should be interdependent. Some things you do, some things the other person does. You help one another. Communities can do that. Communities are, are doing that back east where everybody's had a bad time with the storms. They are helping one another. This is the way human beings have always been. So when we get this idea that it's one man for himself, that's not going to work. It goes against our whole being. So adoptees, you, you need to know that when you are having deep feelings about something, you are better off talking to somebody about it, being with somebody, having them hold on to your feelings with you. And I know what you want to do. You want to go in a closet and hide and be by yourself because that's what you had to do in the very beginning of your life. And even if you were taken home right away with an adoptive mother or adoptive parents, you didn't feel as if you were really with them. You were alone because they weren't getting the loss you were feeling. They were just delighted to have you. I know that because I was delighted to have my daughter. She came to me the day before Christmas in 1969. She was three days old. And I thought, what does she know? What does a three-day-old know? Well, three-day-old know, knows who's, who mother is. And I wasn't that person that she was expecting. Now she has both of us in her life, which can be really fun. <laughs> Having two mothers in your life, it can be delightful and it can be a pain, <laughs> depending on what we're talking about. But uh, her birth mom and I get along real well. <clears throat> we have lots of fun. So um, we were both there for the birth of our grandson eight years ago. Mm. And my other daughter was there too. And you know, we just we just do things together. Uh, we've had two Thanksgivings together, one Christmas together, Mother's Day together. Um, so it can it can really be fine. It can be fine because you know, our children, as our children, they need both of us. They need all of us. You know, they need both families because one family they're in through adoption, through all kinds of legal and social things. And the other one they were born into the genetic and biological and all kinds of other things. I mean, in both cases there can be psychological, spiritual things. But you know, I I know my daughter's personal history. And her birth mother doesn't know that history except what we told her about it. But her her biological families know her biological history and and that tuning into that mother, you know, you do know that all mothers who give birth to a child carry some of that child's cells in their bodies. So all the mothers who gave birth to these babies have cells of that baby in their bodies. Some of you might want to <coughs> see what is happening in APA, the Association of Pre and Paranormal Psychology and Health. <coughs> 